Hi, Body of Christ. I have Wes Camp here with me today. And you also know him as the biggest Jesus. How are you going, Wes? I'm doing good. I, I've got a, a quick, funny story about the name The Biggest Jesus. Yeah. I've I've been accused of being arrogant because I have the name The Biggest Jesus. And my wife has had to correct some of those people saying, it's called The Biggest Jesus, not The Biggest Wes. <laughs> so it's it's funny that people look at such silly things like that and say, well, you're just arrogant because you say, you're the biggest Jesus. Crazy. Well, I'm obviously not. That's crazy. So, yeah, okay, cool. Um, so we're going to talk about your religious past like everybody else. And, and yeah. um, also we'll get into that. And then we'll talk about how you came into the truth as well. So, sure. all right. So what is your story in religion? Um, did you get involved in a religion or religions before you became a believer? Yeah, I was... Well, the first actual church I was a member of is the Church of Scientology. Mm -hmm. um, I was involved in that, studying in that for about a year. I was technically a Scientologist only for about three weeks yeah. um, on the job. But uh -huh. that, that was my first. It's not even really a, a religion. They call it a church just so, so they can get the tax breaks. But. Um, but growing up, no, I, I didn't go to church growing up or anything. I like to tell people I was raised on ACDC and KISS. Um, <laughs> yeah. my, my religions were sports, baseball, football. That was kind of what my life revolved around, even as a young kid. So that, that was the focus. Church was never a thing. I do remember, yeah. I do remember like if I would stay at a friend's house that that went to church like on a Saturday and we'd get up Sunday and go to church I I just felt so uncomfortable in churches mm -hmm. and it just never felt comfortable to me and sometimes that was even into high school I'd stay with friends in high school and they'd get up and go to church and I'd go with them and it just felt really foreign and weird I felt judged mm -hmm. I mean I, I in the parking lot, I just I was just like nervous and didn't want to see people, and because I was kind of the outsider. Yeah, yeah. So tell me more about this Church of Scientology. You in it three weeks, you said. So what were your experiences in the Church of Scientology? Well, just to kind of see how I got into it, I, I kind of see the hand of the enemy, the adversary in this. I. I saw the book Dianetics um, advertised on television, which you probably have seen the ads. They don't run them much anymore, but they used to a lot back in the uh, 90s. Mm -hmm. and I bought the book for my dad for his birthday, and he didn't even touch it, and I read it, and I got, I got hooked into it. Um, and it just goes to show that even, I mean, we talk a lot about the deceptions within Christianity, but Satan has so many flavors of deception that it's we can't even count all of them. And yeah. I got hooked into Scientology, studied that for about a year, mm -hmm. and finally decided to become a Scientologist. So I moved from Iowa to the Minneapolis area okay. and actually worked in a church of Scientology there for just about three weeks. But it was really weird. Uh, <laughs> weird like, no comment on that one. <laughs> <laughs> really weird. Did you have any experience with that church or no? No, but I, I've um seen a documentary on the Church of Scientology quite some time ago. So, you know, I know a little bit about it. Well, one of the weird things, there were several weird things that happened. One was the first time I went to the building, um, I wasn't actually living there, but my wife and I went up on a week vacation to get her a job and get get a place to live and I remember walking towards the building and as soon as I hit that doorway the door was open because it was the summer and people were going in and out as soon as I hit that doorway something invisible hit me and it, I, I was just like disoriented for a few seconds and it was I mean looking back I see it as, as some sort of uh, spiritual attack but it was yeah. I didn't understand it at the time it was just 
weird. And when they took us around on the tour, they took us to the nicest off nicest office in the whole building. And it was, I said, well, what, what's this office for? Whose is this? And they said, well, this is for uh, L. Ron Hubbard. And I'm thinking, well, he's dead. Mm. And they said, well, if his spirit decides to visit us, we have this office for him. <laughs> that's that's so weird and he was like a science fiction writer wasn't he right yeah, yeah. And, and my understanding is he had a a wager with another science fiction writer to see who could actually get a religion going based on their writings and he knocked it out of the park i mean it's a worldwide religion based off of science fiction so did you um start off in Scientology or did you start off in the in Christianity um first or how did it work no the Scientology and, and shortly after that um like right on the heels of leaving Scientology is when uh, God God first opened my eyes to him to the reality of God because I I had grown up I kind of considered myself an atheist I was Probably more of a more of an agnostic. I just didn't know. Just, I didn't care. Mm. I, I, I wasn't going to look into it. I thought, well, I'll just call myself an atheist. That way, if somebody starts talking to me, I'm like, I'm an atheist. So leave me alone. So were you in Christianity as well, or I'm getting that you? Not not before the Scientology, but right on the heels of that, I did. Okay. Get into, I did get into Christianity, mm-hmm. but but my but. I, I think that the way I look at it is that God revealed himself to me then. And this was like 1991, so well, 32 years ago. And obviously, I, I didn't know everything at the time. Nobody does. But um, that question often comes up to people like, okay, you believe big truths now about God, but when were you actually saved? When did you actually realize the truth well i i know that something dramatic happened in 1991 because i i've never stopped seeking god since then yeah. um and i've been digging into his word and i i look at it like this he 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 saved me and then he pushed me into the ditch for 18 years so i could learn through those trials through uh, Christianity and all the deceptions there mm-hmm. that I totally bought into later. I mean, I the the idea of the Trinity and was Christ actually dead when I when God first came into my life, I I didn't know anything about that. I I didn't I didn't come into it thinking, well, God is a Trinity and Jesus didn't really die. I mean, coming yeah. at it from an agnostic's point of view, I just thought death was death. So. Yeah. When they told me Jesus died, I'm like, okay, he died. Yeah. Were you involved in any of the activities in the churches? And what kind of church did you actually attend? It it was it was quite a ride. The the first church that I attended, and we only went to it because it was just down the street from our apartment, was a Lutheran church. Uh-huh. And I I took my Bible because I thought, well. Now that I believe in God, they probably read the Bible in, in these churches. And I took my Bible and I never cracked it open. I'm thinking to myself, well, aren't we supposed to be learning about God? And it was just all the, the liturgy and it was just like a like a social club. Okay. I did yeah. get baptized there, though. I was going to ask you that question about baptism. Did you actually get baptized at all? Yeah, yes, you did. I was. I was uh, I was the grown man in the front standing beside the baby, and we were both getting baptized. Yeah, yeah. Was anything? Did anything make you feel uncomfortable in the churches, or did you question anything in religion? I don't know that I ever really questioned. I mean, I I was involved in some even within Christianity. There's some groups that are within there that are even more cultish than Christianity. And I was involved in some of those that were very legalistic. And I I got in and out of those 
pretty quickly with the help of other people. Um, so yeah, there, there's a lot of legalism and stuff that just doesn't make you feel right because you you want to be free. You want to feel free. And when people start putting these constraints on you in the name of God, it just doesn't feel right. Yeah. And it's easy to go along with it because if they know the Bible better than you, they can they can easily disprove any argument you have. But yeah. it's still it's bottom line, it's still spiritual abuse. I am to tell my viewers more about your experiences in the churches, like a little bit more of what you got up to in the churches? Well, I I became a teacher pretty quickly after getting into Christianity. Um, it it was just it just felt right. I liked digging into the scriptures as much as I knew at the time. I mean, obviously I know a lot more now. Yeah. But just digging into God's words and trying to figure it out and put the puzzle together so I can know him better. Um, that was always something that I liked to do and I enjoyed doing. And some people like to listen to me, so I just kept doing that. I I taught kids, I taught adults, I a friend and I and our, our families actually had a small church for a couple of years in Iowa. And so, so yeah, I, I was always very involved in the church, yeah. whether it was music or preaching or teaching. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So did you teach like Sunday school or anything like that? Yeah, yeah. I taught Sunday school, mostly kids. Um, yeah. Which looking back, especially on the teaching of uh, – Eternal torment. That that's probably one of my biggest. I can't regret it because it's just part of God's plan now. But mm. just from from those kids' point of view, and and them hearing about God and thinking that was true of Him, it it does make me sad because a lot of those kids now don't really have anything to do with God. At least the ones I'm still aware of what they're doing. So. That that kind of bothers me, but I know it's all part of God's plan, so that I do have that piece about it. But anytime you look back on your life and you realize I was actually lying to these people, it it doesn't sit well with me. What made you stop going to church? To church? <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah, yeah. Just all of a sudden, my throat was like. Oh, weird. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> well, I, I, I can't give you the Heimlich from here, so hopefully you got somebody <laughs> in there with you. <laughs> um, anyway. So what stopped me from going to church? Um, yeah. I, I came to believe in, in the salvation of all. I, I actually went from eternal torment to annihilation while I was in the Baptist church. Oh, wow. Okay. And I stayed in the Baptist church for a little while after coming to believe in annihilation. Mm. And, and then that whole Baptist church just kind of fell apart. And then I don't think we ever went back to church after that. Um, and I learned about the salvation of all through primarily through L. Ray Smith. Okay. Um, his, his website, I was... I, I was very active in telling people about the lake of fire, about mm. God's judgments, God's punishments, and that that they should uh, believe in him now. So mm. but something in my heart was just, I just didn't feel like I had a good grasp on the lake of fire. And I thought, if I'm telling people about this, I need to know what the hell I'm talking about. Yeah. So yeah. I was doing a study on that online, and I came across L. Ray Smith's site, and he had a huge series of articles on the Lake of Fire. Mm. So but, who, play, who played a part in you coming into the truth? What kind of people were involved in that? Well, primarily it was, it was L. Ray Smith because um, I was very private in my studies because when I went from eternal torment to annihilation, I really started to question mm -hmm. myself because I'm thinking if I believed in eternal torment for 17 years, 
And now I see something different in the scriptures. I, I need to get a grip on this before I start really telling people about what I'm learning because I was I was questioning myself like did I really understand anything mm, mm. so when I was learning from L. Ray Smith and I read every single word on his website um, even mm. the questions all the questions and all his answers every single word I read and it was a very private study myself until I was felt like I knew what was going on at least in the salvation of all department Mm -hmm. um, so I, I definitely credit his writings and his teachings, God using those uh, to influence me in, in that way. Yeah. So tell us more about how you actually came into the truth, how God called you into the body of Christ. Well, I think that it was just it was just a process of reading L. Ray Smith, checking him against the scriptures. Mm. With the information that I started using concordances uh, more in my studies, started looking more into the Greek and the Hebrew, um, and I, I just started digging in deeper. I, I, I always thought that I had been digging pretty deep, but Christianity is pretty shallow in its study methods. Mm. Um, Mostly because I think they go into the scriptures with all these presuppositions in their traditions that they those traditions keep them from going very deep at all in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. So what are the contrasts of where you were in religion to where you are now as a believer? Well, let, can I can I use a little story as an example? Yeah, yeah. Of course. I had I had one sibling. His name was Troy. He was my older brother. He was 10 and a half months older than me. Everybody thought we were twins growing up. We looked just alike. Mm. We were always together. And he died in 1999 on May 3rd, which was my anniversary day. Mm. And I believe, at that time, I believed in eternal conscious torment. Mm. And, and that, losing him because... He was always very resistant to me. He would mock Christianity, which I was a part of at the time. Yeah. And, and when he died, he, and he was, there were small steps where I saw him coming towards God, and then he died, and I was so mad at God because I thought, God, I could see him making steps toward you, and now he's dead, and he may go to hell and be tormented forever. Mm. So that tormented me, the, the thought of my brother being in that position. Mm. Now, several years later, after I came to believe in the salvation of all, my and I spoke at my brother's funeral, and it was it was one of the hardest things I've ever done. Yeah. And a few years later, my brother-in-law Jason died in, in a house fire, oh. and and I spoke at his funeral. But at his funeral, I believed in the salvation of all. Mm. Big so difference. The contrast. <laughs> In, in the torment I had at my brother's death versus the peace I had in my brother-in-law's death, it was just, it was night and day. The truth, the truth yeah. sets us free. Yeah, yeah, and, gives us peace. Mm. Right, and it's, and you can feel it. It's it's not just a thought, well, I'm set free. It's like that torment is, is a heavy bag to carry. Mm -hmm. Well, that's about it with my questions. So thank you so much for coming on and um, sharing your stories. And, um, yeah, love, grace, and peace, everyone. Thank you, Catherine.